Hello everyone. Let's quickly learn multitasking, multiprocessing, and multithreading in Windows. First, we should understand the concepts of processes, threads, and tasks. Actually, what is process? Process is a container for set of resources used when executing sequence of instructions. To run this instruction, process creates an environment. Process firstly consists of private virtual address space in memory. If you don't have memory, you cannot run process and program. Okay, then executable program. This is your application code. It is loaded to process. Then security context, process ID, and at least one thread. Imagine that this is SQL Server process and this process is running on Windows. Now, if you run any query, what this process container do is it runs a series of programming instructions from the available SQL Server code. For this, it first defines how many tasks are required. If for example, two tasks are required to complete this query. A separate thread is created for these two tasks. Then these threads run in on CPU. From this, we can understand the thread is the smallest unit of execution to which CPU time is allocated. Several decades ago, operating systems had only one CPU and each task was put in one thread and was run one by one, one after another. For example, task 2 and task 3 here could not start running until task 1 finishes. We can call this as single threading. Then after a while, each computer became able to hold several CPUs and as a result, we became able to process several threads at the same time on different CPUs. We call this as multiprocessing. Then further development in CPU has brought core, concept called core. Each CPU started to hold cores on which we could run separate tasks. We call this as multithreading. Now, if you pay attention, in each case, tasks are being run until they finish. For example, here task 5 is starting only after task 3 finishes. This has been found inefficient and the multitasking concept has been developed as a result. With multitasking, each thread does not need to wait the previous thread. Each thread has its own limited time and they can run maximum within it is limited time. If they don't finish within this limited time, they are taken from CPU and another uh, thread runs. Let me explain this multitasking more detailed way. For example, there are 10 threads assigned to one CPU or core if you have. Firstly, each CPU or core has its own queues like running, ready and waiting queue. There are other queues also, but they are not important now to consider. Every time a thread is run, CPU assigns this thread to running queue and this thread state becomes running in Windows. Other threads wait in ready queue for their turn. Okay. They can also be in other queues, but eventually come to ready queue and run we, uh, within the turn on CPU. Each running thread is assigned time. Okay, We call this as quantum. When quantum expires, this running thread is put to the end of ready queue and the first thread in ready queue is moved to running queue and run. We call this as stop as, uh, we call this stop as preemption. Okay. Every thread in Windows are preemptible and cannot dominate the CPU. In this way, we can achieve multitasking. Nowadays, systems can do multitasking, multiprocessing, and multithreading. Hardware level can be something like this. One point also. Nowadays, each core itself can contain logical processors. Okay? For example, if one core contains two logical processors, this core can run two threads even simultaneously. If we summarize, we will have following picture. On each of these logical CPU, thread is scheduled. Therefore, the more cores and logical processors, the better performance because you run many threads in parallel, right? So, we understand how threads are being scheduled nowadays with CPU advancements. Let's now switch to how SQL Server process is scheduled. Can we schedule SQL Server like other processes?